On the Super Review Live, we're gonna take a look at the Hi-Dees AP80 Pro. It's a little digital audio player, MP3 player for the uninitiated. And it is, well, it's the Pro model of the AP80. And the big difference here, if you missed my introduction and unboxing video that I did a couple of weeks ago, the big difference here with the Pro is that for another 20 bucks, you get balanced 2.5 millimeter output. So this is a $170 MP3 player, so not exactly budget, but still pretty much on the affordable side. You know, I recently reviewed the File M3 Pro, that's sub $100, so here we're looking at about twice the price of that player. Do you get twice the player? That was awkwardly worded. Anyway, so this is a live review, and if you're watching this thing live right now, I'm gonna go ahead and go through my favorite points about this player, as well as my least favorite points about this player. But while I'm doing that in the live chat, if there's anything I don't cover that you've got questions about, feel free to drop a question in the live chat. I'm gonna hammer through the core part of, the, part of this review. I'm gonna start by talking about those, those good things and those bad things. And then afterward, I'm gonna give it a score. And then I'm gonna turn to you guys in the live chat and answer your questions. If you're watching this and it's not live for you, it's probably because you haven't dinged the bell if you want if you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can ding the bell. YouTube will let you know next time I'm live and, and, and we can have a conversation. For the rest of you, hang tight. So uh, what was I gonna say about this? There was something else I was gonna add a little bit about this. I mean, just a little bit of context, right? I have a number of digital audio players like this and I've spent about two, maybe three weeks living with the AP80 Pro just trying to find out what are the quirks what are the, you know, the quirks of ownership, the things that might bug you a little bit, and what are the things that really make this thing stand out? And I think that's what I figured out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and head to the table, give it a little bit of a spin. That was bad. Uh, and, and we'll talk about my five favorite things and my five least favorite things. So five first favorite thing is the, the general build quality of this little player. Um, I just dropped it on the ground and obviously you can see that it's still holding up quite well. Just the materials are, I think, quite nice. You've got an all aluminum metal frame here with this kind of anodized treatment. Um, I don't see like any weird wearing or anything on like that. Although, you know, anodized metal can sometimes wear a little bit badly. Um, but so far, I think this player looks pretty good. And you've got glass on not just the front, but as well as the back. And I think that glass gives this thing just a nice hand feel, although it does come at the expense of, of course, let's see if we can show that to you. It's a little bit of a fingerprint magnet. Uh, those aren't quite fingerprints. I don't know what that is, but yeah, it's a bit of a fingerprint magnet. And it's not so much, it's not so bad actually here on this red player that I've got just because, you know, here in the back, it's fairly bright and the fingerprints don't totally stand out against it. I think if you got the AP80 Pro in some of the darker colors that this thing is available in, fingerprints might be a bigger issue, but I don't know. It's, I think, a minor complaint and it's something I can personally live with. Uh, the other things I really like, really like about the build is just generally, I love how small and compact this little player is. Let's see if I can compare it to something else. All right, so here is the File M3 Pro, as well as here is the File M6. And then I guess, yeah, I'll bring in my Sony NWA-105, which is itself a very small little player, but you can see that compared to everything else, the AP80 Pro does stand out quite a bit as being rather small. Maybe here for comparison, this is an iPhone XR. So for comparison sakes, all right. So I like the size, I like the build materials as well. I'm, you know, I'm a big fan that it's got all of the requisite buttons. You've got your play pause button, which I think is necessary, of course. You've got your track skipping, dedicated track skipping buttons, which is nice, file. Uh, and as well, you've got this little volume dial. And frankly, this volume dial, I thought was gonna be the number one reason why I was excited about this. So I've got some other players, right? We're pulling this little guy. This is the Z Zishan Z2, which is a very, very quirky little player. But what I love about it is this volume dial and how, how it feels to just ramp up the volume like that. And so I was excited to get a player with a little bit more modern UI uh, that had a volume dial in it. But, and we'll go ahead and head into 
my first negative about this player, it's unfortunately that volume dial. And I've got a couple of issues with this volume dial. One, I actually find that it's kind of difficult to change volume quickly on it. Like you can, you can kind of see like each time I do a spin, it's increasing the volume by a few notches, but like it's hard, I can't just like hammer on it and ramp up the volume the way I can on something like this where you just, you know, you can ramp up the volume as quickly or as slowly as you want to. I think that's a pretty minor complaint. For me, the bigger complaint is that I really can't use the volume dial on the AP80 Pro one-handed. So if I hold the player in my hand like this and I try to roll the volume up like this, you probably can't really tell, but a couple of things are happening. So one, I'm sort of applying downward pressure to the top of the dial, and that's keeping it from kind of rotating very smoothly, if rotating at all. I find that pretty annoying. Uh, and then the other thing that you might be seeing is that periodically or just kind of randomly, it's turning the screen on and off because this button does, this little dial does also double as the power button. And if I'm using this thing one-handed like that, it has that side effect of accidentally clicking the button. So, I mean, in, in reality, I've just resorted to using this thing with two fingers, which is not the end of the world, but you can just kind of see, like if I want to ramp the volume all the way up or down, it takes quite a bit of time. Maybe that's why, you know, Hydees has put this, well, I think it's actually a Hibby OS that does this, but they put this little visualizer for the volume and you can actually use the touchscreen to ramp the volume up and down quickly, which I guess is a nice shortcut, except it's just kind of making up for the fact that this dial is not quite as nice as I wanted it to be. And as well, I find it kind of distracting, right? If I'm in the context of a menu, and I changed the volume, now I can't see my menu anymore. Is that a big, big issue? For me, I'll just, spoilers, I think that's my biggest issue with this player, which, you know, maybe that goes to show you how few issues I do have with it. But for me, the fact that I can't do this dial one-handed, uh, it, is, it is a bit of a bummer. But you know what, let's go ahead and get into my next favorite thing about the Heidi's AP80 Pro. And it's just the general software and the UI and the touch screen and how responsive it is. It is really, I think, pretty impressive. I don't know too much about, um, this, is, this is based on Hibby's OS and I don't know a ton about it. I wonder if it's based on Android, if it's like Android based because the touch is so responsive, like the momentum physics and stuff like that, which are things that are not especially easy to get done right are done really, really well, I think, here in the AP80 Pro. Um, I mean, compared to the touch controls that you've got here in the File M3 Pro, I've actually got the power off. This thing's powered off right now, um, so I can't quite show you. Let's see if this thing will power on quickly. But compared to the M3 Pro, the touch UI on here is just so much smoother, so much faster. Um, yeah, this is probably not going to be a great display because I don't think I have anything on this memory card. I do not. That is not a good demo at all. Anyway, so yeah, generally pretty impressed with the speed of it. And I think that it's relatively intuitive as well. Um, there are a couple of quirks and we'll get into those. Those will be my next negatives here on the AP80 Pro is a couple of just UI quirks. So quirk number one, and this is gonna range from like really mundane nitpicky stuff to things that actually bother me, but we'll start with a nitpicky mundane one, right? If I go to this sort of top level menu, these icons I just think are kind of hokey looking. Kind of reminds me of like the icons off a of Chevy Volt or something, just not very modern. And yeah, maybe that's me being picky. Anyway, uh, the other thing actually, it's kind of related to this menu is once I go to this menu, if I go back to the player software, and it does kind of treat the player software as like an app that runs in this environment. But if I go back to this player software, the sort order for my music list goes back to song base. And I have to click in here and go back to artist base, which is how I typically browse music. Maybe that's not a big deal for you if you typically browse your music by song list, but I almost always start with artist and then I'll click into an artist, get my albums, 
And then from here, I'll pick a song. That's how I like to navigate my music. And unfortunately, every time I go here to this main menu, and then I go back, you'll see that it's reset itself to a song list and not sorted by artist. That again is pretty nitpicky because frankly, there's not a lot of times when I go to that main menu, but I think worth calling out. Um, another problem I have or another, you know, quirk with this UI is just how slow it is to load the box arts. You can kind of see how slowly they load in, right? If I'll stop scrolling, they'll come into view, but they basically don't ever come into view until I stop scrolling and release touch. And what I think that means is that like, I've on other players, I will use the box arts as a way of visually navigating this list, right? Sometimes it's easier to look at the box art and recognize that than it is to read the artist titles. Unfortunately, that's just not useful here because it goes so, or it takes so long to load in the box arts that by the time the box art is loaded, I've already read the, the artist title. And again, that probably seems like a fairly nitpicky thing. I don't know, what do you think? Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's a thing that sort of bothers me. You can kind of see a little bit too when you come out of the sleep, right? I don't know if you know, if you caught that. When you come out of sleep, there's like that placeholder image and then the cover art will eventually load in. Uh, here, it's actually not too bad. Um, sometimes it takes even longer. Again, I think that's a pretty minor thing. And then here we're gonna talk about I think my the the UI quirk that annoys me the most, and it is related to that sleep or that sort of sleep state. If I pause music on this thing, and let's say, I don't know, I have to have a quick conversation, a quick one minute conversation, and I go back to this player, it's already put itself into like this standby mode, which it's relatively quick to wake out of the standby mode, but you can't wake it with the play pause button. So. I'll pause my music, have my quick conversation or do whatever I was doing, go back, hit the play button and the player won't resume playing my song. I have to click the power button, wait for the screen to turn on and then I can click play to play the music. It was actually kind of a similar issue that I had with the Filo M3 Pro. I just, I really, I don't know, maybe I just take it for granted with some of my other players, my Sony players where I can very easily just at any moment click the play button and it'll start playing music. Unfortunately, the AP80 Pro is not one of those players, but is that a big issue for you? It's up to you. We'll get back into talking about some of the good things. So the AP80 Pro does support Bluetooth, unlike the Fio M3 Pro, right? I reviewed this guy, no Bluetooth here on the M3 Pro. The AP80 Pro does support Bluetooth. And on top of supporting Bluetooth, it also supports LDAC as a codec, which is, I think, a nice touch. LDAC just kind of being one of the, the highest resolution codecs that you can get for Bluetooth. Um, on the downside, because I, I, I gotta give a little bit of a down with every good, I think battery life on the AP80 Pro is just, it's not that great. I mean, it is nice, small, and compact, and you get that really responsive UI that comes with probably a, a, an internal processor that's a little bit powerful for a small device like this, but the downside of it is that battery life is just not that great. Um, general playback, I think they claim about 13 hours. I was getting about maybe 10 hours of audio playback with my FLAC files. And for me, that's almost enough to get through two days, but I actually found that I was, you know, I found myself charging this thing every single day. It's on, the, it's on the cusp of being a two day device for me, but it ended up being basically a single day per charge, which I found a little bit disappointing. I think for me, the, the standby time just ended up not being as great. Uh, the standby time is not as great here as it is on something like the Fio M3 Pro. And I don't know, that's you know a similar problem that I had with my Sony A105 and it didn't prevent me from loving that player. So take that for what it's worth. But the battery life on this I found was just a little bit on the mess side. On the plus side, actually, I forgot to talk about this when I was doing my hardware pluses, but I do appreciate that they've got, you know, type C charging here on the bottom, as well as they've got headphone ports on the bottom of the device. I appreciate that. And as for those headphone 
outputs, the power output on the AP80 Pro I found to be quite exceptional for a small little player like this. So um, for you know reference, here's what I was able to power with the AP80 Pro without any problems. This is my Sennheiser HD 600, it's a 300 ohm headphone. And on the AP80 Pro, well, there's a couple of, there's a number of things that you have available to bring more power out of this thing, right? So one, we do have that 2.5 millimeter balanced output, which traditionally will give you more volume than your 3.5 millimeter. And that is the case here with the AP80 Pro. As well, if you swipe up here from the bottom, let's punch in so you can see that, there is an easily toggleable gain to go between high and low gain. So if you combine the 2.5 millimeter balanced as well as the high gain mode, you can get pretty, pretty impressive power out of this. Interestingly though, I actually didn't need either of those options in order to get my Sennheisers to be plenty loud. I was able to just off a 3.5 millimeter connector, get the Sennheiser HD 600s to plenty of volume for my personal listening preferences. If you want to blast your ears off, you can switch on high gain. And if you still haven't blasted your ears off enough, you can get a balanced cable and get a little bit more volume out of it there. So, I found that quite nice. Now, I don't know that this is necessarily connected to that last positive, but let's go into another negative that I have with this player. And this is, this is a little bit of a, maybe this, I could have fit this into my design quirks, but it was a big enough hassle for me or big, big enough annoyance. I wanted to break it out specifically. And it's that, and I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate this, when I start playing a song, this thing will, like they're trying to be smart and clever and slick. They will fade in the music and fade out the music. When you, so they'll fade it in when you start playing a song and they'll fade it out when you stop playing a song. The fade out when you stop, I'm cool with that. The fade in when you start, I am not down with that. And here's why. The fade on the AP80 Pro is actually long enough to interfere, like kind of cut out some, just like a bit of music, right? So if I select, let's say, what's an example of what I was listening to? Is it Michael Jackson's Beat It? There's like this, yep, it was Michael Jackson's Beat It. There's a sort of, you know, a little drum, a little drum riff that kind of kicks off that song. And the very first hit of the drum, you actually can't hear on the AP80 Pro. Now, does that, ruin things? Not necessarily, but I, I do find it pretty distracting. If you put this thing into gapless playback mode and you just go through an album, every time it goes from one song to the next, it won't do that fade, which is nice. But if you select a song, like the very first song you select, basically the only way to hear the very beginning of a song is to finish the song before it. Does that make sense? Does that sound annoying? I found it kind of surprisingly annoying. Maybe I'm being, but I did find that surprisingly annoying. Uh, let's go into my fifth. I, I'm, I hope you've been keeping track of counting. I'm pretty sure this is my fifth and final positive here with the AP8A Pro. And that is actually the EQ settings. So there's a couple of things that this thing does pretty well with EQ. One, uh, let's go into our equalizer. You can see that you've got a nice tend band equalizer. Uh, it does have presets, but you can also just customize it completely to your liking. And you've got lots of settings in between, which I quite like. Look at that. You can even adjust the whole thing up and down so that if you want to, let's say you wanted to like boost your frequency, but you don't want to accidentally clip it. You can just kind of reduce the gain and pull it all below, um, which I think that's actually pretty slick. The other thing that I think is pretty interesting about the EQ options here on the AP80 Pro is this thing they call MSEB, and I wasn't curious enough to look into what MSEB stands for. But what it is, is it's like a series of essentially EQ sliders, but what, they're, what they've done is they've kind of attached them to very common audiophile lingo. So if you want to, you know, let's say you think of your music already like this. You think of warm, you know, warm and dark music versus cool and bright sounding earphones or something like that. You can adjust your little slider based on making a 
headphones sound more cool and bright versus warm and dark. I think what's also like just kind of cool about this is if you're just getting into the hobby and a lot of these common lingo, these common words don't mean anything to you. What is recessed mid-range versus forward mid-range? What does that mean? Here with the AP80 Pro using this, this uh, MSEB option, you can kind of play around with the EQ and experience for yourself what it's like to have a headphone with more forward vocals. I thought that was actually kind of cool. And then that's going to lead me into my final negative about this player, which actually has nothing about nothing to do with the EQ. My final negative about this player is something you've probably not noticed. Actually, you might have noticed when I did my unboxing video. This micro SD card slot, all right? Looks like a normal micro SD card slot, except it is literally impossible for me to get this memory card out with my fingernails. And I've got pretty short fingernails at the moment. I did clip them recently. Even before I clipped them, I could not get this card out. I have to use another tool, like another micro SD card, in which case I can push it in and eject the, eject the card that way. And then pushing it back in. It's a little awkward. Uh, is that a big deal? It's kind of annoying. I guess it depends on how you put them, put your music on this thing. But I found myself, you know, wanting to put music on this device by ejecting the the card and putting it into my computer. And unfortunately, that was a bit of a pain in the butt every time I had to do it. So I don't know that is the Heidi's AP80 Pro. Those are my five favorite things about it. My five biggest nitpicks. I'll go ahead and give it a score, and I think out of five stars, these AP80 Pro, I'll give it three stars. I was sorry for that awkward transition. Um, the AP80 Pro, I'm going to give it three stars. I think this is a pretty solid little player for the price, 170 bucks, so it's sub $200. Really, the strengths here are the size of the hardware, the power output that you get out of it, and um, just the general fluidity of the UI. There are some issues, some quirks that come along with it, and whether or not those are things that are big enough to annoy you and prevent you from being happy with this player, I don't really know. Uh, for me, I would be happy with this player, although it's not my favorite player. So yeah, three stars out of five for the AP80 Pro if you're interested in checking this thing out. Of course, I've got links in the description down below. If you like this video, if you found this helpful, please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. You can ding the bell if you want to be on the next live stream. And for the rest of you, if you're watching live now in the live chat, let's have a conversation. If all you wanted was a review, you can peace out. You got your review. If you want some answers to some unanswered questions, let's talk. All right, so I'm going to be looking down here. I apologize for the break in eye contact, but this is where I've got my live chat. Hassan saying iPod nano flashbacks. Yeah, a little bit, like size-wise, I, <clears throat> I don't know what it is. I most there's a lot of high-end digital audio players out there, and they all get to kind of large, chunky size, and there's something appealing about it. But for me, I just I really like having small hardware, and the size of this thing is I like it quite a bit. It's not quite as small as something like the Shanling M0 or the File M5, but I think there are fewer compromises here with the UI than you get with something like that. And probably similar on the iPod Nano also had some UI compromises. Jorge Duarte asking, why do you need this little thing when you have music streaming apps on your phone? So that's a good question, right? A lot of people don't understand why anyone would buy an MP3 player in the year 2020. For me, it's a couple of things. The primary reason that I want a digital audio player, honestly, is access to buttons that control playback. That is the number one reason I want a digital audio player. And so you'll find that in a lot of my other reviews, my complaints will focus on, especially the players that I'm not the big fan of, my complaints will focus on the hardware buttons or the, the functionality of those hardware buttons because you got to get that right. Here, they got most of it right. I'm just disappointed with the, the dial and the fact that I have to do that with two fingers. It's just not easy. That's my biggest complaint here, but otherwise I am pretty happy about having at least play button. Uh, oh, I mentioned there was a second, second reason that I like having a little player separate from my phone. 
And it's because, I don't know, frankly, I, I prefer iOS uh, as a phone for most of my mobile computing. But I think iOS is actually really pretty bad for someone like me that has a standalone music library, like syncing through iTunes, garbage. All the other music apps that I could find in the iOS app store, I couldn't find anything I like. So I could live with an Android device as my music player, but I, I prefer using iOS for everything else. So it, having a standalone player like this or like my Sony A105 just means that I don't have to make music playback and music UI a requirement of my phone and it lets me use iPhone, which I don't know, a lot of you, I know a lot of people here in the community are into Android and not iPhone. For you, that might not make sense, but for me, it does. The Asian hat was adding a little bit of color to that too. He was saying, um, also, I think some people, these are used little players like this instead of a phone when a headphone cannot be driven with the device. So yeah, that's another thing to consider is that most phones, the, the headphone out, if there's one built into it at all, it's not the highest quality. And with either demanding headphones like my Sennheiser HD 600s, you're not gonna get enough power out of most phones. Or with a sensitive IEM, you're just gonna hear a lot of amp hiss um, and it's just not gonna be a very clean signal. So that's a potential reason why you might, might not use a phone as well. I mean, the, the, the fact that most phones don't come with a headphone jack on them anymore kind of negates that because, well, if you're gonna use a USB-C 3.5 millimeter dongle, those actually sound pretty good. I don't have any complaints about how those things sound. Actually, that kind of reminds me too, I didn't really talk too much about how this thing sounds. I just mentioned that it's got plenty of power and nobody asked, but I'll go ahead and just say that sound quality wise, it, it's as good as most DAPs, right? Which is to say it's good sounding DAP. Um, I actually found, and again, like most, most digital audio players, I don't find that there's much difference between the way that they sound. I did actually find that kind of like the File M3 Pro, the AP80 Pro, tends to be a little bit on the bright side. And it does look like they actually use the same uh, Sabre DAC. So maybe that's the common, maybe that's just like a, a, an attribute of that specific DAC. But I did find this to be a little bit on the bright side compared to my Sony A105. Not again, not a big enough difference that I think it's gonna significantly change the way that your audio sounds, but something to consider if you are looking for a little bright, a little brightness added to your music, or maybe you're trying to avoid a little bit of brightness, this thing is gonna add a little bit. Into it saying holla, holla. Uh, do, do. Optato saying, I can relate to the box art loading complaint. Definitely not a nitpick IMO. Yeah, it's just, I mean, some other players, right? Like the File M3 Pro, this thing doesn't even show you box art on the artist screen which is a little bit of a disappointment. This will show you box art. It's just not especially useful. What I find box art really useful on the artist screen is just making it easy to scan that list visually really, really quickly without having to do any reading. And the fact that the art takes so long to load kind of prevents me from using it that way. Texway saying first time here. What's up Texway? Welcome. Did you ding the bell? Did it work? DNT Arc saying, oh no, I hate fade out, fade in. Yeah, yeah. The File M3 Pro does a little bit of a fade out when you pause your music, and I don't mind that at all here. And I think it's also like a faster transition. Um, if you've dealt with, you know, animation or transitions and stuff like that, you know that just a few uh, a, a difference of like 100 milliseconds can be the difference between something feeling smooth versus choppy or too long versus still responsive. And I found that the transition here in the M3 Pro still felt pretty, pretty snappy. Um, here it's a little bit on the slower side. I, again, I don't really mind it when I pause the music. It just really bothers me when I select a new track and I miss out on the first, I'm going to guess like 400, 500 milliseconds. So it's like a half a second of audio that you miss out on this player because of that, that transition. I think it's just unnecessary. It doesn't add anything. D Seeks, thanks for watching. Kyle Sefton, hello. 
Ben is asking, just arrived, does the product have an FM radio tuner? And the answer is yes, actually. I've, I'll be honest, I did not play with the AM FM radio or the FM radio tuner on this thing at all. But if you exit here to the main menu, there is an FM tuner. Please insert headset. I'm guessing it's telling you that because it's gonna use the cable on the headset as an antenna. Oh, interesting, it won't even let me into it without connecting a headphone. So let me go ahead and connect the headphone real quick. But it does have an FM tuner. Again, I didn't play with this thing at all. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if that has to do with the fact that I went through the balance connector. Let's use a little adapter going to the 3.5. And that would be an interesting quirk. Interesting. So interestingly, if you want to use the FM tuner, you have to use the 3.5 millimeter headphone out. I don't think anyone that's listening to FM radio really cares about the fidelity of a 2.5 millimeter connector, but there you go. So yes, there is an, an FM tuner on it. I didn't use it, so I don't really know how well, uh, how good this thing is in terms of receiving a signal. I haven't listened to FM radio in maybe 10 years. Mr. Good Boy Gone Bad, how's it going? Victor, how's it going? Yeah, Taxway is saying, pretty sure this product also has a step counter if you're into that sort of thing. I mean, he's not wrong, it does. Again, if you go, if you exit this menu, um, Here's where you've got your step counter. Frankly, I did not use this at all. So whether or not it's accurate, I have no idea. Interestingly, it does have a calendar view, but it says no record. I'm not sure what that's about, but uh, yeah, I suppose you could count your steps with your MP3 player if that's a thing that you need. You can also do that with your phone. DNTR asking, what is the maximum storage it can take? I actually, I'm not certain. I have only, I'm using it with a 128 gig card because my library fits within that. Um, I didn't look into, let's see if I can find out quickly. I don't know uh, offhand what maximum size of memory card it supports. And looking at the website, which I'm looking at uh, Hi-Fi Go, they're the fine folks that sent this to me for review. I don't immediately see any reference to it, although I see that Texway answered your question saying 512, so we'll go with 512 unless you find better information. Jack Fied saying, I love the AP80 Pro, it's my favorite DAP. So yeah, I'm curious, Jack, so I told you my five favorite things about this player. What are your favorite things about this? If this is your favorite DAP, how come? Anthony Moreno asking, have I thought about trying the Neural Loops? Uh, answer is no, I haven't really thought about that. Is that similar to the Neurophone? So the Neurophone was like the over your headphone that had IEMs kind of built into it. It was kind of, kind of awkward, but an interesting idea in that there was some sort of digital signal processing that would understand the shape of your ear and somehow tune the audio to you, your, your particular anatomy, which is a cool idea, but no, I, I, I haven't tried either the Neurophones or the Neural Loops, and it's an interesting idea. I don't know how much, uh, how much I would spend on it. It kind of sounds gimmicky, if I'm perfectly honest. It seems like the sort of thing that could definitely be done well, um, and maybe they actually have done it well, but just the way that they've been pitching it is it feels like it's a little bit too mainstream for me to have a ton of faith in it. But maybe I'm wrong. Uh, Lord, Christian was asking, which is better, the AP80 Pro or the Sony NWA55? So, um, I have much more experience with the Sony NWA45, the 55 being pretty much the same thing. And personally, between this and the A45, the Sony, I would personally much prefer the Sony. Uh, the, the general software and the UI on this is actually, I think, a little bit smoother. Um, but I don't have the issues, like the, the Sony will show you box arts much more quickly than this thing does. 
So despite the fact that like the touch UI and the smoothness and the scrolling and stuff I think is better here, there are actually some, uh, I guess you could call them performance benefits to something like the A45. And I think the A55 is actually even a little bit better than that. For me, the bigger things that I like about the A45 over this, um, and the A45 is a more expensive player, just to, just, just to be clear. But the other things that I really like about the A45 better is I like the button layout better, right? You've got your dedicated volume buttons, which is easier to quickly hammer the volume up and down. Um, and then also just like the way that that thing goes into, well, there is no sleep mode on that player. Like the pause button, the play pause button will always bring that thing, will always make that thing start playing music. Uh, whereas again here, this thing kind of puts itself to sleep and I have to wake it up and then I can hit the play button afterward. Um, yeah, there's just f generally fewer UI quirks I find with Sony's players. I think Sony does a pretty good job at just getting the basics right. And for me, there's a lot there. If, you know, getting the basics right isn't necessarily, well, I guess if your basics are, are different than my basics, you, there's actually some reasons here to like the AP80 Pro. Right? Like I think power output on the AP80 Pro is quite a bit stronger than the Sony A45 as well. Like there's no amp piss here with the AP80 Pro, whereas on the A45 with some sensitive IMs, I can elicit some amp piss. So some reasons to like the AP80 Pro. Personally, I would go with the Sony though, just cause UI is kind of king for me. Uh, ben is asking a question. This is kind of split up over a number of um, messages, so I'll try and piece this together. But listening to a lot of audiobooks and podcasts, uh, question is, do you use a specific software to sync or do you drag and drop? So that's actually a good question. Um, for syncing music onto this thing, I'll, all I ever did was I ejected the memory card with the help of another memory card, put it into my computer, dragged and dropped files, and then plugged it back in. So I didn't use any specific software for syncing. I don't, I didn't look into whether or not Heidi's provides software for this thing, any specific syncing software. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't look into that at all. I just used basically Finder on my Mac to drag and drop files. If you're using something like iTunes, getting files out of iTunes and onto this thing, I'm not sure how that's going to work. Um, that might be more of a pain in the butt than it's worth, to be perfectly honest. But that's why I don't use iTunes. Uh, Palumi is saying in the system settings, there is a switch called button operation when. So yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and pull this in um, just to show you what he's talking about. Uh, if I go into, I guess he said it was in the system settings. There's two different settings menus, by the way. Um, button operation win. All right, here. So here's a goofy UI quirk. You can't see the whole thing. Um, basically what this toggle does is it turns on and off the, the functionality of these buttons when the screen is turned off, which I don't know why you'd want to turn that off. Maybe you, you will put it in your pocket and you don't want to accidentally press buttons. But I do want to be clear that that is actually separate from the issue that I was talking about. Um, so I, I do have that setting turned on. I have that toggle turned on, which means that I'll, leave this, I'll be listening to music with the screen turned off and the buttons totally function as expected. It's only when I stop playing music and this thing will go and kick itself into sort of a standby mode that's when the buttons no longer become responsive. And that's whether or not that toggle is turned on. Um, so thanks for pulling that out, Palumi. But yeah, just to be clear, the, the issue that I have with this, unfortunately, is not resolved by that toggle. Optato asking, how stabby are the edges in the corners? Uh, any holding discomfort? So I think it's a great question. Um, I actually had some issues with the, the Cowan R2-D2, R2... Mark II, I forget what that model was, wow. It's been a while, but that was another model that kind of had uh, an aluminum frame with sharp edges like this. I actually have zero issues with the sharp edges here on the AP80 Pro for a couple of reasons. One, I think they're just not as sharp uh, as they were on that Cowan player. Two, 
because this player is so small, I don't have to like reach across it and have this corner dig into my palm like I did on the Cowan player. And then the other thing, frankly, is that because it's so small, I end up holding it in my hand like this. And so the fact that there are sharp corners just doesn't matter to me at all in terms of comfort. So yeah, I didn't have any issues with comfort here with the AP80 Pro, but good question. The Ho is asking, which is the best budget Android DAP? Uh, I guess it depends on what you qualify as budget. I personally don't have it here in my room. I think it's out in the living room. Oh no, it's right here. Uh, the, the player that I like personally the best as a budget Dan Android DAP is here, the Sony A105. Um, I love this little guy. I had some complaints about the battery life, but I've kind of found that the battery life has improved with some of the firmware updates, so that's nice. And just generally, the UI on this thing is just so good, so good. Um, yeah, this is probably my favorite. That it's about 300 bucks, so maybe that doesn't quite qualify as budget in your case. Um, we do also have, there's just not much cheaper, frankly, that supports Android. There is the File M6, and this player, I think, actually got better than it was when I did my initial review. The main reason it got better is that they unlocked uh, the ability to sideload apps. So I can sideload any app onto here, any Android app, and some of them aren't gonna work because there's compatibility issues, but most of the ones that I've tried have worked. So here I've got Pulsar as a music player, which I think is just a nicer music playing UI than the stock file stuff. I don't have any music here on the device right now because I've got that card here on my AP80 Pro, but um, this has gotten, I think, a lot more interesting than it was when it first came out. So I, does that answer your question? Is either of those the best? I mean, I think the Sony is clearly better than the file, but it costs about twice as much. So Lumi is asking, how did the 10T2 Plus pair with the AP80 Pro? Uh, I mean, frankly, like most any digital audio player, again, this is a little bit on the bright side, but apart from that, I wouldn't say there's much to differentiate this player from the way any other player sounds. So, I mean, the 10T2 Plus is a tad on the sibilant side, a tad on the bright side, and a little bit sibilant, so maybe this exacerbates that a little bit, but I think you're really splitting hairs personally uh, if you're comparing how the T2 Plus sounds on this player versus, frankly, any other player. Marcos asking, will we have a BTR5 review? So the BTR5 is a little Bluetooth adapter by file. I'm probably not, I'm probably not gonna review that one. Um, I actually have the Radson ES100, um, most, I got it because I was just kind of curious. Everyone was pretty excited about that. But I don't really have any strong use cases for a product like that. I just don't, I don't use Bluetooth very much. I'm pretty happy to carry around a little player like the Sony here. And so having a Bluetooth adapter in between my music and my headphones, it, it doesn't really do much for me. So no, I'm probably not going to review the BTR5. Vikram, where's the beard tutorial? What a beard tutorial. Just get old and then you can grow gray beard like that. Asian Hat asking, uh, was wondering what IEMs you were thinking of reviewing in the future? So there's actually two that I've got sitting over here that I'll be, be unboxing very soon. One is the Tens Gym HANA and the other is the Moondrop KXXX which is the drop exclusive version of the KXXS. So I'll be unboxing those things soon and doing a review of those as well. Hatul, how's it going? 
Thanks for tuning in. Optato asking, uh, are you skipping the Blonde 5 review? Yeah, I don't. I unboxed the Blonde, uh, the Blonde BL05 at the same time I unboxed this. And I was planning to do a review of that IM, but after also getting the Moondrop SSR and the Tin Hi-Fi T2 Plus, I just, I like those things so much more than I like the Blonde BL05 that it's hard for me to get super motivated to do a review of the BL05. The, the 05 is not a bad IM. I think it kind of drops the ball in terms of being a successor to the BL03 because it just, it it's different. Like it's got a similar bass presence, but it, it's just tuned quite a bit different. Um, and I find it's just harder to be excited about the BL05. I would probably give it like three stars out of five. It's not a bad little IM, but I can't really think of any reason why I would recommend the BL05 over either the BL03 or the Tin Hi-Fi T2 Plus, or especially the Moondrop SSR, which of those four, the SSR is personally my favorite, but probably not yours. Just a warning. Asian hat saying that is a fancy looking mouse. You want to see my mouse? This is an old man mouse. This is a trackball mouse because I've got wrist issues because I'm old. It's a Logitech. What do they call it? The Logitech Ergo. Uh, I got it because I've been working at home a lot and I do like it as a mouse. I replaced uh, the Logitech vertical mouse, the MX vertical, and that helps a little bit, but I don't know. My wrist is just over 20 years, well, yeah, wow. Have I, I've been using the internet for over 20 years. Uh, Tushar is asking, joined a little bit late, have I compared it to the Hibby R3 Pro? And the answer is no, I have not actually used any of Hibby's players. My understanding is that this basically uses the same software as the Hibby R3 Pro. The hardware on the, on the R3 Pro is different. Physically, it looks like it's very similar in size, maybe a little bit larger. Uh, it doesn't have the volume dial, which I thought I wanted here, but turns out maybe I don't want the, di the volume dial. So there might be a, a couple of things I like about the Hibby R3 Pro better. I'm interested to use it, but I haven't actually used it, so. Sorry if I can't make that comparison better for you. Getting a lot of questions about that mouse. I'm glad, hopefully you guys got what you wanted out of that close up. Um, Ajmal is asking, what are some good headphones under 50 bucks and under 20 bucks, except the MH755? So, you're narrowing down your choices if you're looking at under 20 bucks. But fortunately for you, I think one of my favorite headphones is under 20 bucks and it's the Cost KSC 75. You've probably heard that recommendation a lot of times and you've probably looked at pictures of it and you thought that thing is too ugly for me to wear, even if it only costs 20 bucks. But I'm gonna tell you right now, you should get the Cost KSC 75. Just an excellent sounding headphone. And you can get it for like 13 bucks, at least here in, in, in the US on Amazon. R very frequently it is priced under $15. So Jack Fide was following up. I asked him why he liked his AP80 Pro. He said, I like the size of it and also the general sound signature to me sounds slightly neutral, slightly bright and with good detail retrieval and plenty of power. Yep, totally agree with all of that. Another question about the Hibby R3 Pro or this. I don't know, man. I haven't used the R3 Pro, so I don't totally know. I'm guessing it's gonna be fairly similar in software. I'm kind of curious. Anyone with the, with the R3 Pro, do you know, does it have that same like standby mode that prevents the play button from playing music? Hatul Katai, yes, it is adorable. Don't you, look at that. This is the palm of my hand. And this is the AP80 Pro. I agree, it is adorable.
Matul asking me, how am I doing? How, how am I doing? How's life treating you? How are you feeling lately? Same question to you, how you doing? Um, I've been doing pretty well. I've been pretty busy at work, which is why unfortunately this review took me a little bit longer than I expected. I was hoping to get this done earlier in the week and would have been unboxing the Tens Gym Hana and the Moondrop KXXX before, but unfortunately it was a bit of a crazy week and I'm just getting to it now. Uh, on the bright side, I did get out to the beach and do a little bit of surfing, very badly, I will say. Uh, but I did get to do a little bit of surfing on Friday morning, which was nice. Okay, Isaac is, how can we get high-res audio songs? Thank you. So high-res audio songs, the, the easiest, the cheapest way to probably get high-res audio um, is from Bandcamp. Now, unfortunately, there's a couple of limits with Bandcamp. One, not every artist is on Bandcamp. In fact, a lot of mainstream artists are not on Bandcamp. And then the other kind of limit with Bandcamp in terms of looking for high-res audio is that you can't tell which resolution or which, uh, which bit rates are available for, mu for a given album that you're gonna buy until you buy it, right? I, f I wish Bandcamp would update that and just let you know whether or not an album is available in high res or not. Not even because I care about high res, I actually don't. That's why I got this joke making fun of high res. Um, but actually, I prefer when my files are 16-bit FLAC files and not 24-bit because it sounds the same to me and it's much, much smaller files. So, sorry, that was not an answer to your question, really. Another place you can look is there's HD Tracks as a website. But I think once you get into some of these other websites, so HD Tracks, there's 7 Digital. There's probably other ones out there, too. Um, but whether or not they're available in India. I'm not actually sure, just because music licensing rights are so region specific and it's annoying. Bandcamp seems to be more lenient that way. Although I guess I've never tried downloading anything from Bandcamp outside of the US. Ashutosh saying, I, you don't look older than 33, but okay. Yeah, I'm a little bit older than 33, but not Tom. I'm 37, I'll be 38 in a couple of months. Uh, Ed asking, what are my thoughts on the Estelle and Kern SR25? It's an interesting looking little player. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about the hardware design of it. That maybe is an irrelevant point, but I don't know. I'm not a big fan of like the tilted screen. That seems kind of funky. Uh, but I'm interested to try out the Estelle and Kern players, but I, yeah, I just, I haven't. Asian Hat asking, am I interested in reviewing some Thea Audio products? Yeah, I'm interested in checking out some of them. I know some of them have got some, some hype behind them, which is always interesting to check out and see how they do for my preferences. Um, if I'm perfectly honest, like just looking at Thea Audio from the outside, again, I have no experience actually trying them. Uh, the branding kind of turns me off, just aesthetically. Is that superficial and shallow? Yeah, probably, but aesthetics do matter to me. Um, so that turns me off a little bit. And then, yeah, just some of like the designs seem a little bit on the, the hokey side, but that's about as much as I can critique from just looking at pictures of them on the internet. Unbox Electronics is asking, how does it compare to the File M3 Pro sonically? So they both actually use the exact same DAC chip, which is a ESS19, I forget the, all the numbers after, after that, but they actually use the same, uh, the same DAC and I made the same notes. I didn't actually compare this head to head with the M3 Pro, but I compared them each individually head to head with my Sony Walkman and they both sounded bright to me. So I think that they're both pretty similar in that respect. This one does have dual DACs, dual, dual chipset for that bounced output. So 
this can support higher volumes than the M3 Pro, but both of them, I think, do a pretty good job of um, with power output. Ajmal is saying, I've heard about the cost, but they cost over 50 bucks with shipping here. Alternatives, no, get the cost KSC, KSC 75. There is nothing in that price range that sounds anywhere near as good. Even if they're marking it up from 15 bucks to 50 bucks, it's still worth it. Trust me. Total amazing, uh, been doing well. Life's getting better and chiller. Got a pretty solid grade, just looking at universities and stuff. It's an interesting point in your life. You're making some big decisions Hope it works out well for you and don't get too stressed. Enjoy some music. Tushar asking, what are my thoughts on the world moving away from Chinese goods? And how do I think it will affect the Chinese companies like File and Moondrop? So I don't really know how to respond to that question because uh, is the world moving away from Chinese goods? Is that a thing that's happening? Uh, it's not a thing I'm aware of. Um, if there's something, some reading or something that I should be looking into, feel free to drop a link. Or if you want to join the Discord server, I've got a link pinned in a pinned comment below this video. You can join my Discord server and we can talk about something like that. Um, I gotta say, it's not a thing I'm familiar with at this point, so I've got no thoughts, unfortunately. Or fortunately. Some people don't know what they're talking about and they still got thoughts. I'm totally happy to say I have no idea all the time. I say, ah, that's my favorite thing to say is, I don't know. You should try it sometime. Sazib saying Sony NWA45 or something else in the same budget. Personal preference, I have not used any digital audio player at that price range or cheaper that I like better. In fact, the only audio player that I've used that I like better than my Sony A45 is the A105. I like this one a little bit better. Even though the battery life is not nearly as good on the Android bass player, I do prefer that uh, just kind of day to day because, well, this thing's got Android on it and I was able to set this thing up to automatically sync my music library. And that is friggin' awesome. Asian hat asking, what is my fave IEM as of today? Is it still the T2 Pro? That's interesting. So the T2 Pro was my favorite IEM for a long time, but no, not anymore. I would say my favorite IEM right now is probably the Moondrop Blessing 2. It's quite a bit more expensive than the T2 Pro, but I think it's actually, it's actually legitimately worth it. The, T, the, the Blessing 2 is just, haven't listened to it for a couple of weeks, so I have it out on loan. I am looking forward to having it back soon. Looks like there's some discussion now following up on the, the, the Chinese product boycott situation. I'm interested to dig into this, but I guess that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Again, the Heidi's AP80 Pro. It's a solid little player for 170 bucks. I give it three stars out of five. It's got some quirks, but I think also it's got some pretty nice strengths. If you're interested in checking it out, of course, links in the description. Subscribe to the channel, ding the bell. I'll see you guys in the next live stream. Thanks for chatting. Join the Discord server. Check out my merch if you want to dress like me, like a 38-year-old man, almost 38-year-old man. Check out my shirts anyway. Thank you guys for chatting. Really appreciate it. I'll see you guys on the next one.